today I would like to go over the new Afterburner app. Well, I don't know how new it is, but I've just, just discovered it and I've got it working and doing things. So, I have, let us actually just do a bit of screen capture here. My fingerprint does not work. Probably because it's not a real fingerprint. Right, uh, screen, screen capture, screen, screen capture, screen capture. Go. Right, screen capturing. So, imagine uh, if it was, where is, the, where is the Play Store? Right, go to the Play Store. Go to the Play Store, look for Afterburner. Afterburner. And it's that one with, well, the picture of the Afterburner, and it's by RL Jones AU Australia. I've already got it installed, so we can open it. Now, mine is connected at the moment to the Wi-Fi, the afterburner that is. So I'm going to boldly assume that if you're looking at the app, you've hopefully managed to get your uh, afterburner connected to your local Wi-Fi. If not, I will maybe make another video on it once I work out how to reset this back to being the factory settings and then me starting from the very start again. But at the moment, we'll assume that you have it on the internet. Now this is the app. Uh, this would be the communications part. We would just set up the Wi-Fi LAN. And I've obviously already got my IP address of my uh, afterburner in there, which you can find from the afterburner itself by going into the comms settings and it tells you your IP address in there. Mine is 10.0.0.126. Put in your 10.0.0.126 in there, hit connect. Connect your afterburner and you can do all your things from in here. This is just the basic status. Then you get the detailed status. We can see the voltage and whatnot. And obviously it would show you the other things if the heater was running. Thermostat settings. You know, if you've got it using it as a thermostat, turning it on and off at set temperatures. Uh, everything else. Fuel usage. You can set your fuel pump size in somewhere in here. Is it in here? Uh, no, look, it's still 1688 because it's fine, but once it's remembered, uh, yeah, right, so you can tune all your bits, all your things. Uh, Bluetooth configuration, we're not using Bluetooth, I don't like the Bluetooth, it's fine. We've done the Wi Fi, it just takes you back to the Wi Fi bit, and the MQTT, which we we're going to cover in a moment, we will come back to that in a moment, but that is it connected via Wi Fi, so as long as I'm um, in the vicinity of my own area network, I can connect and control the heater. Now, if we are going further afield, uh, you can use MQTT to control the heater. Now, if we now just use the normal, no, normal website, where's Chrome? Let's go to 10, no, can you move out the way a little bit, please? Go down there. 10. Dot Zero dot zero dot one two six. That will take us to the afterburner's normal uh, web interface. Da, 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 da. Right there it is. And then from in there we will to just the comms settings. And I'm going to obfuscate my uh, broker in there because I'm running my own MQTT server on my Unraid NAS in the house. There are, well, there's a few free MQTT servers out there. They're called brokers. So you would put your broker address in there where it says broker MQTT, where it'd be Hive MQ or I forget the name of the other one. And the port, username and password if you required it and your topic prefix is what you've what you've called or what you're going to call your heater well like give it something unique because if you're using one of the public ones if you call your afterburner afterburner one and somebody just searches through afterburner one they can control your heater and turn it on and off the is it the beta version the beta version of the newest firmware for that uh, and for and the app uh, Ray's implemented a pin system, so you put a pin number in and it 
changes the name of your heater, I don't know if it makes it something random or something including the pin number so it's not easily guessable by a third party. But that, put all your settings in there and well mine's just a topic prefix of that you can't see because well, I mean I could show you because it won't matter. Uh, yeah, so I've put them in and enabled it, or if you disable it, hold on, let me press the disable button, hold on, 1688, submit, right, disable, so it's disabled at the moment, but you put all your details in there, put in your topic prefix, uh, the, after, the one at the top here is the afterburner one, that is the one that gets saved into your afterburner for you, so call your unique name, etc, etc, give all your, or the address of where it's going to be going, and then enable it, boop, enabled, and now it should go online after a few seconds, da, 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 I think, if I've remembered correctly, maybe it doesn't, I mean it is online, I, well, maybe we'll come out and we'll go back into the comm settings, see it is online, it just didn't refresh the website, so, now we've got that saved into the Afterburner, if we go back to the Afterburner app and we go to the MQ, MQTT broker bit, if we put in the same details, which I'll put in my details here, uh, uh, no, uh, 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 no, 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 uh, 1883, no username, uh, I don't suppose paste is still going to work is it? No, uh, uh, hold on, let me copy that, because <laughs> I can't remember, I'm not typing out, copy that, and then we'll go back to the prefix, put that in there, paste, that's us, and we are ready to now connect, and ba ba we are now connected via MQTT, via the internet, uh, to the afterburner. So you can use this anywhere that you've got mobile phone signal. Assuming that your afterburner back where you left it is connected to the internet, you can turn it all on and do the things from, well, the internet. If I was to turn off, no, I can't turn off Wi-Fi because I'm in a big metal box and there's no mobile signal. But uh, if, I, if I get on screen here and I press start, oh, also the app has got voice commands, uh, not voice commands, voice notifications. And then we'll turn the heater on. It clicked. Heater started. Heater started. Lovely. And she says all the things like... Heating glow plug. Heating glow plug. And then it'll be like started, running, stopping, all those kind of things. And yeah. So basically I'm doing this just now because I want to set the this heater up here. You can't see. There's a two kilowatt heater sitting up there. I want to leave it in the workshop running an experiment and I want to be able to control and see what the afterburners, well, what the heater's still doing while I'm not here and have it do things and have it, well, turn it off if I need to or restart it or see if make sure it's still running and doing things. So, yeah, if you've managed to get your afterburner on the Wi-Fi, I highly recommend going and getting the app and using that to control it. Hold on, let me switch to detailed status and then you get to see glow plug amps and body temperature fan and once the fuel pump starts it'll show us the fuel pump. This is a really slow to start here. I'm fairly sure it's also a new ECU that only does the 3 to 1 ratio of max to min fueling because I can turn it down a little, but I can't turn it down as far as I want. But max works and I only need it to work at max power. I also have strangely the quietest fuel pump I have ever had. The quietest stock fuel pump. Igniting. She's igniting. It's not as quiet today. The other day this pump was silent. Weird. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just going deaf. Anyway, hopefully we should now see how the body temperature should start to increase in temperature. 7 degrees, yeah, so it's lit at least. I'll give it that. Pump speed, you can see there. Glow plug. Let's slowly speed up. Igniting. 
ignited. Oh, heat exchanger. There we go. Finally, that is a battery flattening glow plug in there. Anyway, hot air, body temperature's going up. It's doing the thing, all being controlled by uh, uh, MQTT. Should be able to tune it from here as well. Uh, heater tuning. Yeah, so I can still do all the edit it and whatnot from here. Actual pump rate 3.3 hertz, smashing. Right, I'm going to stop it now. Now it is running. Turn here off. Shutting heater down. There we go. Yes, so if you have an afterburner and you want to take it to the next level of control, that being uh, remote control, uh, I highly recommend going and getting Ray's app off the Play Store and using MQTT to uh, control it, um, you know, from far away. Uh, there are free and paid MQTT servers out there or run your own like I'm doing. Right, yeah, uh, future me, uh, while I was editing, realised that I've blurred out a lot of the stuff for the MQTT stuff because it's on my own server. So I thought I would show you connecting to the Hive MQ public broker. So if you go to, well, if you actually just Google Hive MQ public broker, you'll end up at the Hive MQ public broker website where it gives you the details of the broker and the TCP port and all the other bits. So if we copy this, copy, copy text, copy text, and then we go into Nope, still, still that one. Log in to your Afterburners web interface. Mine's on 10.0.0.126. And then we put in the broker MQQT and we paste that, which is broker.hivemq.com. And the port is not that way. Uh, no, it's not because it's a different tab. It's not a different app. Uh, 1883. 18, nope, still a different tab. 1883, so we put an 1883 there, 1883, and it should just connect straight away, more or less. Although, I did this the other day, and it took a little while for it to actually connect. I don't know why. I don't know why, but going to home and going back to comm settings. As I say, I did this the other day, and eventually it came online eventually and so that broker.hive.mq you would take you would now go into the afterburner app and where it is in the settings up in the settings bit you go to mqtt broker and we put in the address again paste save and our afterburner is called after burner five six five six five six okay connect Ta-da! As I said, the afterburner is online, and now we'll go back and it'll show it being online. So this is it connected via the internet, not via the local Wi-Fi interface. So you can use this from anywhere that you have phone signal and your afterburner is uh, on the internet. So if I go back to Chrome, it'll now show you that the broker.hivemq.com is online. It takes, I don't know, what is that, like a 30 seconds a minute. So you can now leave this web page, I mean it's just your standard uh, web page interface for your afterburner so you can leave that, close that and then just purely use the app and we'll turn that up to there and press start and turn the heater on Heater started and the heater has started, splendid so that's what I wanted to show you, it's really that simple now plug. thank you, yes, it's really now that simple to put your MQTT settings into both things and have it running and running from the app or whatever interface you want like home assistant or whatnot. but hopefully that clears up a bit uh, but yeah, it's nice and easy to set up now uh, being in the app, you can just set the settings and away you go and you're done and the app's nice and I don't know, racing it wasn't that nice enough, but I, it does exactly all the things you needed to do, and I mean, it's fine, I like it. It's absolutely a okay. Any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below, and I'll try my very best to answer them. As always, thanks for watching.